Uh, the last report we need to do a budget for is the balance sheet. So when we did a budgeted cash flow statement, we budgeted for future operating activities, investing and financing activities. When we did a budgeted income statement, we looked at uh, expected future revenues and expenses to get our expected uh, net profit. And with the balance sheet, all we're going to do is our expected future assets, liabilities and owner's equity. So just as we prepared an old balance sheet, we'll do one for the future in the exact same format. We'll do our current assets, our current non-current assets, we'll total those up. And following the accounting equation, we know that must mean on the other side, that's got to equal our current liabilities, our non-current liabilities and our owner's equity. So just some items in particular that might uh, pop up in the balance sheet are prepaid expenses. So for example, on the 1st of January, the firm's balance sheet showed there was prepaid rent of $2,000. So that was rent that was paid last period, but is for this period. Now, uh, at the end of the year, the balance sheet shows that we think well, there'll be a prepaid rent expense of $2,500. And during the year, the firm expects to make rent payments of $30,000. So based on this info, we want to know uh, how much would go in the balance sheet, uh, sorry, the cash flow statement under operating. Would we have rent payments of $30,000, rent of $27,500 and prepaid rent of $2,500? Would it be opera, uh, rent of 28,000 or prepaid rent of 2,000 or rent of 27,500 or rent of 2,000? So going through the options, we're going to rule out the $30,000 one. Um, we have paid that much, but it's not just for rent. We'll get rid of this one here because the prepaid rent of $2,000 was actually in last period, so that won't go in this period. We'll get rid of the operating uh, the option there where it says uh, rent is 27500 Again, it's got the prepaid rent of 2000 That was last period. So it's got to be this one here. And let's just look at why. So we've paid $30,000 during the year. So we know that whatever title we've got in here has to come to $30,000. We've just got to look at what it's for. So if we paid 30000 but 2500 is for next period, that must mean that only 27500 is for rent this period. Um, and then we can figure out, oops, just going back, um, based on that we don't need to put in the prepaid rent here as a payment because it was actually paid last period. So we don't need to put that in. All that was paid this period was a total of 30000 and that included $2,500 for next period. Uh, let's have a look at the income statement. How much would go in there? Would it be 29500 30,000, 32,000, or 27,500. So we'll get rid of 30,000. That was what was paid, but that's not what was incurred. We'll get rid of 32,000 because that won't um, take out the prepayments for next year. So we're down to either 29,500 or 27,500. We'll get rid of that one and, and let's look at why. Uh, so we know that the $30,000 paid during the year uh, wasn't all for expenses incurred this period. So we'll take out the $2,500 for next year because even though we're paying it, it's not an expense. Uh, it'll be an expense for the following period. So we better take that out. That leaves $27,500 of rent paid this period and consumed. But we need to add in the amount that was prepaid from last period. So if we add those two numbers together, we'll get 29,500. Let's take another example, this time with accrued expenses. On the 1st of January, the business has accrued wages as a current liability of 1,000. At the end of the period, they expect in their budget of balance sheet to have accrued wages of 3,000. And during the year, they expect to make wage payments of 50,000. So again, we need to figure out a budget for how much is gonna go in our balance sheet and how much is gonna go in our income statement. First, let's start with the cash flow statement. We will figure out how, what will the actual wages paid be. Will it be 50,000? Wages paid of 50, accrued wages of three. Wages of 49, accrued of three. Wages of 49 and accrued of 1,000. And let's have a look. We'll get rid of those two because we know that there's only been $50,000 of payments made during the year. That's what it says here. So that must rule out anything that's not 50,000. So they're gone. So now we're down to wages paid of 50 or wages paid of 49 and accrued of one. So we're going to get rid of that one 
And the correct answer is this one here. And the reason why is we've got $50,000 paid, so it's got to have total 50, which it does. However, we need to remember that $1,000 of what was paid would have been used to pay off the old accrued wages from last period. So they were wages that were incurred last period but hadn't yet been paid. So we're going to pay them out of that $50,000. So that's how we ended up with uh, wages paid of 49 for this period and accrued wages paid of 1000 for last period. How will this information be recorded in the income statement? Well, we have wages of 50, wages of 52, 51 or 53. So we will get rid of the one that is 50,000 because that's what was paid, not what was incurred. That's gone. We'll get rid of the one that's 53,000 uh, because otherwise we'd be including some of the accrued expenses at the end. We'll get rid of the one that's 51,000 because that's not factoring in that some of the payments this period were for next period. And we're going to end up with 52,000. So how did we get that? We ended up paying $50,000 this year, so uh, we need to take out though that a thousand of those payments were for the next period, uh, last period, sorry, wages incurred last year. So that leaves $49,000. So out of this amount here, the $50,000 paid, $49,000 was for wages this period. But we need to add in the accrued amount for next at the end of the period that will get paid next period of $3,000, and that must mean the total wages expense for this period. For 52,000.